Is this it for Kona? Maybe. Yeah, it's gone through some shifts in the last year or so, as well as a lot of other industry, big league cycling companies like Trek and Specialized and Giant and Pon and all of them. Well, Kona is definitely affected as much, if not more so, because it's a littler company. And they have some big news that kind of dropped this week. And we'll kind of read between the lines and see what that all that means. And we'll go from there. But hopefully there's a silver lining to all this. But let's let's break this down and check it out after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary out of used one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on the latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. Hey, welcome back to the Noah Guy Bicycles Hanging with the Guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy on As the Wheel Turns, so do the days of our rides. Well, yes, this news is broken. Any news about any industry leaders right now that breaks is kind of like passing wind in church. It's not a good thing. What we're looking at is off the cusp of announcement from Trek and some other various issues that ripple that made the net headlines. This is one of those are like, oh, what's going on? So Sea Otter Classic. If you don't know what that is, it's an event outdoor festival type race deal in California. Uh, I believe it's still in Monterey. And my aunt and uncle, they used to live right, right in that area. So unfortunately, I never took advantage of it because I was always working so much in spring. Anyway, it is the industry's kickoff to the season. Well, this gives them opportunities to, well, you know, bring out new products, bring out companies to, you know, showcase to the public. You know, you, you've seen these things like bike shows and so forth for the industry. Well, this is for releasing to the public and get people excited about the cycling industry, uh, new parts and all that kinds of things, right? So this is a great place for a company like Kona to go in and kind of showcase its latest stuff. Well, they set up tent, and they are, you know, it's a big lift for these companies. Let's, let's put some context to it. There's a big lift. It's a cost of going out there, getting your staff, getting your equipment, big shipping, not a cheap place to go, and set up for like half a week to a full week for before and beginning. And it's all this planning of this is your opportunity of getting out there. And it also has a lot of media press. So you'll be seeing a lot of articles from other YouTube channels and so forth. Uh, bringing up and inciting features of new tools and new toys and gadgets and bikes and all that stuff, which is awesome. Um, so you'll be seeing that throughout this weekend and through the next week. One of these days, I'll get a chance to go out there. But Kona set up their tent and everything. It's like they did the promotional packet of like, come out and see us. We're giving away a free bike and check out our new stuff. And they tore it all down on Wednesday and the event starts on Thursday. So or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe it was that. But they were gonna have a kind of a release of, on Thursday, like a town hall meeting of some sort. It's kind of weird within the company. Well, lo and behold, it sounds like they had a pretty big shift at the end here. Um, I would, I mean, you're already committed. It's not like you're getting your money back or anything but not showing up. So that's kind of a weird little thing. Uh, but apparently the financial advisor has been changed very recently and this may have done a kibosh on us. Well, what does that mean for Kona? Well, we need to start back to how did we get here and what kind of a projection that we can probably maybe guess or leading towards going from here. Kona was established in 1988. They're basically out of Washington, Seattle, uh, I think uh, Bellingham area. In any case, they were a company that started out small and it was kind of a cool niche little line. They had like cool little names, cool little bikes, but they are actually turned to more in a mountain bike, full suspension, eccentric company. But they do have some outliers like fat bikes and um, kind of fun little, you know, ice cream truck is one of the name. I mean, how can you not like a company that has a bike that calls the ice cream truck? I mean, I want to chase out of that all day long. In any case, um, over the years, they've been a kind of a fun niche line. I mean, they had fun names, they had fun bikes, and yeah, they were made overseas, but they had a kind of a, a coolness factor to them. They're not standard and standard. 
how does this bike line fit into the independent bike dealers? Well, it was a, a secondary line to compare, you know, to be up against like Trek Specialized or what other lines. Usually wasn't a flagship line, unless it's a really small shop. In that case, you know, they were pretty small. So essentially, they really made all their little monies off of little shops doing little niche things. And they didn't have a huge line. I mean, they don't have 1,400 road bikes or anything. They have like one or two, a cyclocross bike or gravel bike and, you know, that kind of thing, right? Uh, mostly heavy into full suspension, like I mentioned. Well, what we're looking at is, you know, these particular bike line over years is built up and worked and scratch and clawed its way and they have Kona world where people from shops would go out and check out their stuff for a week in Washington. It's not like a blast, right? You know, like it's a bike shop company for bike shops, like independent bike shops kind of deal. Well, they were sold in 22 to Kent Outdoor. Well, Kent Outdoor is different from the Kent bicycles so they're two different companies so this is more of an outdoors water a sports type company i have to read into a little bit more but it, needless to say that doesn't matter they were purchased well you know with small lines where they get purchased everything gets reviewed and unfortunately being sold at the height of the 2022 of this is a good time to sell my company because all my books look awesome uh, followed by the 2023 crash and yeah this company picked up the picked up Kona at the wrong time and now they have to do some scrambling and have been doing some scrambling to try to find where this company is going to go from now being owned by Kent well they've done a couple of boo-boo things in my opinion they went direct to consumer which they probably had to do following suit like specialized and some other companies because Canyon has basically changed the market of that. So you're kind of pigeonholed to have to do that, which kind of really puts a heartburn on all those independent bike dealers that have been carrying them and supporting them all these years. They don't like that. Uh, so some of, the, some of the shops just dropped them or not carrying as much because why would they? Because they're doing direct to consumer sales. And another thing is they actually, I think, canned their whole race team. Well, that's the indication that Specialized did as well of like marketing and so forth, just to kind of cut some fat. So yeah, there's going to be some readjustments. And they had over inventory just like everybody else. And last winter, they had buy one, get one free. Well, that follows suit of Marin did the same thing a few months earlier and a couple other companies. So these smaller companies are really struggling, like with Specialized and Trek really struggling and trek doing their right size 10 percent reduction 40 percent reduce of skews is a big chunk well that's the same thing that kona is going to have to reassess what they're going to do from here well setting up this big event and pulling out of the sea otter classic is a <gasps> they did not do that and well yeah and what's going to happen to the company from here is very questionable well, the good thing, though, I would say the Silver Lions are owned by a company that probably has a little deeper pockets, so they can, they're can they just readjusting. They're in the red for too many months straight since 2022, and they just need to do some refining of the brand. Well, unfortunately, the refining of the brand is not going to go so well if it gets muddled up or damaged any more, like direct-to-consumer sales, two for one bikes, that kind of thing. Well, I think they've done all of that already, so I don't think they can go any lower than they are now. Hopefully it's a cool line that they refresh. This has happened before, so let's take a review of what has happened in the past. So let's go back in time. See these little Schwinn signs? Yeah, Parker Bikes, we used to carry Schwinn. That was our headline bike line back in the early, late 80s, early 90s. It was the Trek back then and the Specialized back then. Well, they crash and burn. After they crash and burn, they got purchased by another company, similar to Kent, kinda. And this company actually put some money into it and bolstered the brand, made it really nice. They came out with a homegrown series, really cool bikes. Their 50 year anniversary for Schwinn was a bomber of a party in Las Vegas. <laughs> I was there and I, very, I don't remember very much of it at all. But in any case, it was a blast. And they did a great thing to the actual Schwinn before it became sold again and went into department store brand as we know it today. 
Well, prior to that, they did a lot of good things. Well, Kent can take the same playbook of this investment group and bolster the brand, make it a little bit cooler, maybe make a couple in-state models, uh, that kind of thing, cool paint jobs. I mean, you know, the bass boat color of the homegrown series Schwinn, I'm still looking for them. And also Schwinn had other things going for it, like the Paramount series, which was the high-end steel that was made in Waterford and which turned into Waterford Cycles. That's a whole different story. But needless to say, there is a silver lining where Kent can take this company and make it great again and make it awesome. Um, I don't think I should have said that. That's just weird. Any case, well, they can actually make the company actually very strong but they're going to have to strip it down to rebuild it back up. Same thing as Specialized is doing with its own rebranding and Trek is doing as following suit. It is happening to all the big brands. What does that mean for the independent bike dealer? Well, in the sense that it might actually come out to be a very strong line and they're going to be hungry to make independent bike dealers carry their line again and back their company and all that. So, Going back to the 90s where the bike shops were the brand and the bike companies that they carried basically supported that. Well, in 2020 and 21, or actually before that, back in 2001 and 2002, my God, I'm getting old. Trek didn't specialize, decided to make everybody concept stores, make it a Trek store, specialized store, before they bought all the stores they have now. So fast forward to today. Well, the bike independent bike dealers are basically trying to find their niche again, or they're actually really doubling down on that because, hey, the bike lines are actually not supporting them like they used to, if they have ever at all. Well, Kona's going to be one of those lines that can go in at those independent bike dealers and go, hey, we can give you good pricing, cool bikes, and you pay us when we need to, you know, because we have the financial backing to support this. That's what they're going to have to do. Basically, get back to grassroots where Jameis and Fuji and all those other mongoose back in the day where B-lines were the secondary lines to you know, Schwinn and Trek and Specialize, where bike shops are going to carry four to five up to seven different lines to cover their market because they're not going to pull all the bikes from one company anymore because they can't invest all their eggs in one basket. It's just ridiculous. See what happened to them. They built up Trek over these years and boom, Trek is basically cutting them at their kneecaps. Same thing with Specialized. Sorry, it's just the damn truth. In any case, this situation it could be a silver line for Kona to restructure and actually go forward. Yeah, I've been around for 30 years. That's what I see between the lines. Um, it could be some really cool things for Kona to come out here, but they're gonna have to scale back, which they have been, and restructuring to see the old playbook does not work in our current and going forward market. So we gotta make a new playbook. What's that gonna look like? Actually, it's going to be good for the independent bike dealers because it's going to give them opportunities and lines like this that are cool to compete against the big boys. Because guess what? If you were a Trek dealer, independent bike dealer, if you didn't sell the Trek, Trek store is going to go across the street and you're not going to want to carry Trek anymore or if you lost them already. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, what I'm going to do to keep my line or keep my niche going? Kona is a niche line. Mongoose used to be a niche line. GT used to be a niche line. There's the playbook. It's already there. It already has happened. It could be redone and revamped again. I hope they come around. It was a cool line. I liked it. And I've sold several of these and refurbished them over the years. And they're actually a pretty solid bike. They still have a strong name of the cycling world. Not as big as Trek and Specialized, but they have a different kind of following, which they can actually double down on. So any case, well, hopefully they come out of this strong and hopefully they support the independent bike dealers again and somehow work that with the direct-to-consumer sales. I'm not sure how they're going to fuddle with that. Specialized seems to be doing okay with it-ish. Any case, well, there you have it, the latest news. Hopefully we'll see more Konas in a better light in the near future. The Sea Otter Classic, check out some stuff, just Google it. It's just, it's, it's one of those fun events. And if you're in Cali, definitely go and check it out if you can get to it. It's one of those fun event type deals. But in any case, well, thanks for hanging out with me in the garage. I'll have information about this topic below in the description. 
If you have any insights about Kona or have a Kona or heard news about Kona, throw it in the comments below. This is the community. And again, this is my opinion about reading between the lines. Thanks again for hanging out with me. If it's nice in your neck of the woods, please go for a ride. Until next time, from the garage, have a wonderful day.